Ever since the first monster movies flickered onto our screens, monstrous creatures became a part of our culture like never before. But along with these monsters, there also came the unlikely hero, the only hope to save humanity. Indeed. <sighs> these heroes represented a beacon of hope in these otherwise dark worlds. But when talking about horror cinema's bravest protagonists, there was one that is often overlooked. Ernest P. Warrell. We did it, Rimshot! We got it! I am Trollfighter number one. In an age when the Halloween movies of the 1990s have garnered whole new levels of appreciation, thanks to a legion of 90s kids, I'm often surprised how frequently Ernest Scared Stupid is left out of the conversation. Probably some simple misunderstanding. Despite being a Disney movie released under their Touchstone label in 1991, it's unavailable on Disney+, Plus, and it's becoming increasingly hard to find on DVD and Blu-ray. We're talking real danger here. Stand and deliver, fire in line, moment of truth, end of the line, 8th level Mario Brothers. Then you look at something like Hocus Pocus, which Disney started milking the moment they found out it was a cold hit. Now look, we put the picture's name on everything. Merchandising! Merchandising! Plus tax. Plus tax. And while I know Hocus Pocus is probably more popular and therefore more marketable for the studio, I think they overlook the passionate fan base that also exists for this movie, and Ernest in general. Thank you, 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 thank you. The character portrayed by the late great Jim Varney is no stranger to this channel. One of the videos that really helped launch Hats Off Entertainment was my profile on Jim Varney's career. After making it, I was put in touch with so many fellow Ernest fans, all of whom seemed to have a special place in their hearts for Ernest Scared Stupid. <laughs> Though it didn't find much love critically at the time, If I were eight years old, I might have liked Ernest Scared Stupid, too. Maybe. You know, I think um, uh, happened in this picture I, I've seen the other ones. Oh, yeah? I, I don't like him, uh, basically, in, in this character. Yeah. I don't think it's funny when he gets close up into the camera and mugs that that's funny. Oh my, I'm afraid. It then seemed to garner even more ridicule by the first wave of internet film critics. And when you look at its IMDb or Rotten Tomatoes page, you're left wondering, why the hate? Do you smell fish? Even if the humor isn't your cup of tea, Ernest Scared Stupid is still a wickedly fun, surprisingly dark kids movie with inventive practical effects, immersive sets, and a still terrifying creature design. And a great big head and little tiny beady eyes and great big noses and they were... it was horrible! Unlike today, when most kids' films seem to be afraid to have any menace, this movie terrified me as a kid. I gotcha. Thanks, Ernest. You saved me. I thought I was a goner. <laughs> But isn't that what it was supposed to do? It gives the movie its stakes and makes the hero all the more important in the story. And endo trollo, comprendo? Maybe you avoided this movie because of its negative reception, or maybe you haven't seen it in a long time for similar reasons. But I want to revisit it to highlight why it deserves to be appreciated and talked about the same way as the other 90s Halloween films. And I can't think of a better time than now to do so, considering it was released 30 years ago this month. Inhabited. Oh. Hey, Vern, what's that you got there? I guess the best place to start is to talk about the man behind the denim, Jim Varney. Know what I mean? Again, I profiled his rise to fame early in this channel's history, but it's still amazing to look back on. So here's a quick rundown. Jim Varney was a struggling actor and stand-up comedian who couldn't really get a lot of acting roles when he took a job by an ad agency to be the TV pitchman for a local dairy company. The popularity of that commercial led Varney and the ad agency, Cardin and Cherry, to use the character for other clients. Boy, now that's a good investment. Kind of like my money market account at First Federal. Pretty soon, Ernest was a local, then later national sensation. It was only a matter of time before Hollywood came calling, in the form of then-Disney CEO Michael Eisner who commenced the production deal with John Cherry, director of the commercials, to adapt the character to a feature film under Disney's Touchstone. It's a success story that we'll probably never see again. 
I mean, can you imagine the Disney of today giving a feature film to an independent TV commercial character and then letting the director of said commercials have full creative freedom over the project? It's a testament to Eisner and the Disney of the 90s in all the chances they took. The first Touchstone movie came in 1987, followed in quick succession by one in 88, then 90, and then Scared Stupid in 91. And Scared Stupid aside, they were all pretty big box office successes for Disney. Though they ended their relationship in 1991, John Cherry and co. continued the series independently for another five movies. And while the other movies are still inventive in their own way, it's clear Ernest Scared Stupid was the last one to have a budget that allowed this level of freedom. I mean, there's even a Simpsons joke about this. Wow, the public library. We'll stay here for a while, Vern. But what I love most about the Ernest movies is much like, say, the Three Stooges shorts, Ernest's world and the characters around him changed based on what the story called for. There really isn't much continuity between the movies, except for them centering around Ernest. This allowed all of these movies to feel unique and different. I love how simple the series starts with a summer camp backdrop, but Ernest is soon battling an evil twin, saving Christmas, and fending off a word of trolls in this movie. Following the success of Ernest Goes to Jail, Disney film chief Jeffrey Katzenberg wanted the next Ernest movie to be a haunted house comedy, a concept that the Ernest creative team, John Cherry and Coke Sams, didn't really like. They were considering an Ernest secret agent movie, amongst others, but Katzenberg was relentless. Eventually, they compromised. As a kid, John Cherry believed a troll lived in an old treehouse in his neighborhood. Cherry pitched Disney a haunted treehouse movie, to at least allow them to have some freedom with a tired concept. And surprisingly, Disney agreed. To afford us a safe haven against advancing hordes, as well as offering truly elegant country living in rustic surroundings. In crafting their story, John Cherry wanted the movie to have real horror at its core, with a villain that was truly menacing. Bring me the head of Ernest The design for this villainous monster came from the Chiodo Brothers, a trio known for creating killer clowns from outer space, designing the nightmare fuel that is other treacherous screen characters such as Large Marge and the Critters. The movie was filmed in an abandoned warehouse in Nashville beginning in mid-July. The heat was apparently so unbearable that the Trantor the Troll costume had to come equipped with its own air conditioning system. You see, Mr. Big Bad Short and Ugly. Later in the movie, when an army of trolls invades the town, the Chiodo brothers were tasked with coming up with over a dozen different troll designs. As a result, a few of them were slight modifications of killer clown masks. The lead troll, Trantor, is one of the most impressive elements of the movie, even 30 years later. With his two noses, sinister grin, and monstrous horns, Trantor truly personifies what we always imagine the monsters under our beds would look like. Boy, I sure hope you're from Giebler. In fact, the only note Disney had when viewing the dailies for this movie was that Trantor had too much snot coming out of his nose. This character just set the gold standard for monsters in kids' movies. He's truly scary, but as a kid, I also kind of wanted a Trantor talking doll. And I still do. Can some toy company please license this movie? It really deserves a line of action figures. Say, I'll bet you guys have trouble meeting girls. Don't know what to say, what to do, how to get things going. <laughs> but also, how does the stupid bully in this movie think Trantor is just someone in a costume? Scary costume. He really deserves what happens to him next. <laughs> In addition to these great troll characters, the movie is also full of great human ones, including Old Lady Hackmore, played by Eartha Kitt, who was just wonderful. You will open the ancient door and all that lurks inside. <gasps> Flee the evil place! Flee! She brings a lunacy to the role, but also adds some much-needed exposition into the story. You haven't seen Horrible till you see what it does to the children. Heaven help us. Them that dies will be the lucky ones. The design for her mansion alone is really impressive. It's filled with a great amount of eclectic set decoration, 
and actually feels very similar to the mansion set in Nothing But Trouble. Then there's Tom and Bobby, played by John Cadenhead and Bill Burge. Does a fat puppy hate fast cars? <laughs> now, if you've seen other Ernest movies, you're familiar with these characters. Well, sort of. Similar duos seem to appear in most Ernest movies, and were often always Ernest friends in these movies. Though inexplicably, they very rarely were played by the same two actors. Let's just break it down for a minute, shall we? In Ernest Goes to Camp, there's the two camp chefs, Jake and Eddie, played by Gaylord Sartain and Ernest writer Dan Butler, who, oddly enough, is an Ernest Scared Stupid, though he plays the sheriff here. Next, we get to meet Chuck and Bobby in the TV series Hey Vern, It's Ernest, Ain't that right, Bobby? played by Gaylord Sartain and a newcomer to the series, Bill Burge. They return in Ernest Saves Christmas as airport workers, oh, ain't that right, Bobby? and in Ernest Goes to Jail, though they're now security guards and Ernest neighbors. Then, in Ernest Scared Stupid, we get Tom and Bobby. I guess Gaylord Sartain was unavailable to play Chuck, because this guy is just doing an impression of him. Bobby, don't worry. Safety first. Get to work. When looking through Gaylord Sartain's IMDb, it looks like Fried Green Tomatoes was in production at the same time, therefore accounting for his absence. I guess if you want things done right, you gotta do it yourself. In the next movie, Ernest Rides Again, we get these two vacuum salesmen, Frank and Joe, played by two actors we've never seen before. Bill Burge returns in Ernest Goes to School with a female partner this time, played by Linda Cash, and then in Ernest in the Army, the two actors from Rides Again come back inexplicably. I guess these two characters were John Sherry's way of homaging Laurel and Hardy, because, oddly enough, he did end up making an actual Laurel and Hardy movie in 1999, which was supposed to star Jim Varney and Chuck's actor, Gaylord Sartain, but Varney's illness caused him to be replaced with Bronson Pinchot. I'm out of breath just talking about this. Anyway, in all of this, I guess I'm trying to say that Chuck and Bobby are the best iteration of these characters, and I wish they appeared together in more than just two movies and the TV series. Ain't that right, Bobby? Also returning from Ernest Goes to Jail is Ernest's dog, Rimshot. You know, Rimshot, you're a cute little dog, but you are one ugly little kid. Who is my favorite of all of Ernest's companions. I mean, he's the one that actually pulls his weight. How many Jack Russell Terriers do you know that can drive a truck and fright trolls? He's certainly more useful than the kids in this movie. Outside of Ernest Goes to Camp, this is the only movie in the series that focuses a lot on a child-supporting cast. They serve the story well enough and give Tranter a truly menacing purpose, as he captures kids one by one, turning them into wooden statues, and then uses them to awaken his troll army. They look just like Brussels sprouts. I hate Brussels sprouts, don't you? This story element is worth it alone just to see how delighted Ernest is when he finds out that Trantor only captures kids. And start to capture the children all over the world. Just the kids. And speaking of Ernest, let's just talk about Jim Varney. For this being the fourth Ernest movie and playing the character dozens of times in commercials and the TV show, he's really at the top of his game here. His timing, delivery, and physical comedy are all perfected to a T. You can tell he was definitely comfortable in the character by now, and knew every nuance of Ernest. There's an amazing cut in this movie, where Ernest learns that he's the only one that can defeat the troll in this big heroic speech, and then we transition immediately to this. It's just a great cut, and it's timed perfectly and acted impeccably, even down to Rimshot. The story also gives him a chance to do some dramatic acting as Ernest as well. The end scene where Rimshot gets returned to life still pulls at my heartstrings. There's nothing in that tree for me. Rimshot! 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 Maybe it's because I recently had to say goodbye to my own Jack Russell Terrier companion, but Varney's acting here is just the type of acting that rarely gets displayed in kids' movies today, because it feels so genuine and real. You actually feel the love he has for this little dog in every one of their scenes together. It's just amazing. It's time to get our blood sugar back up into the combat range, you know what I mean? 
It's just evidence that he really took the Ernest role to heart and never phoned it in. He has you laughing one moment. The secret oriental fighting art of Japanese gardener. And then seething with hatred in the next, like when the sheriff tells off Ernest. He's been acting like a child about this troll thing. It's time to grow up. But I saw them. They were... It's this vulnerability that made us love and root for Ernest as kids. He always felt like the one adult who actually understood us. Who goes there? Uh, don't shoot. Don't shoot. I'm on your side. And Ernest Scared Stupid is the perfect representation of that. Who are they? Don't pay any attention to her. She's a Gemini. And besides, it's a full moon. <laughs> the film took a major gamble, being a kid's horror movie that is actually pretty scary. This seemed to put off parents at the time, though, and the movie was only a modest success. As I said, Disney chose not to produce another Ernest film following its underperformance. Why? Well, I've never known when to quit. Just ask my fourth grade teacher. He never knew when to quit. But at least they allowed John Cherry and co. to keep the brand and the character. It's another rare occurrence that would never happen today. This movie marked a major turning point in the Ernest franchise, leading to the last theatrical film, followed by the direct-to-video sequels. I think there's something to enjoy in all of the Ernest movies, but this one is really special. Ernest Scared Stupid deserves a second look for many reasons, chief amongst them the amazing performance of Jim Varney. Troll Fighter 1, that's me, will be roaming the streets of Briarville like a rabid dog. No offense. While he dreamed of being a serious character actor, Ernest Scared Stupid gave him the opportunity to show just how many characters lived inside him. A woman's work is never done. Outside of what seems like a small, passionate fanbase, this movie is critically underappreciated on every level. Yeah, it's not perfect but it does have everything this type of spooky kids movie should have. The scares are played straight, and the comedy is consistent throughout, coming together for a balance that defines what a horror comedy should be. Most important, it also has a surprising amount of heart that impressively doesn't detract from either the comedy or the horror. Ernest Scared Stupid needs to have midnight screenings, merchandise, action figures, and at the very least, be readily available for new generations to discover. Know what I mean? <laughs>